From April 2017, the Scottish Parliament had full control over income tax. Income tax is massively important, being one of the largest income sources for the government and also the largest tax bill paid by most individuals. I'm here to try and explain each party's policies and help you get your head around it. On a vague outline basis, we have the Conservatives are just going to follow the UK Parliament. The SNP are going to be very similar to that, just with one small ban change. Labour and Lib Dems both want to raise at least an extra pence in the pound on each tax band, uh, mainly to go towards education. And the Greens and UKIP are going to change things a bit more, having new bans introduced altogether, but they have very different aims. There's going to be a lot of numbers involved in this, given it is tax, uh, so we'll be moving over to the drawing board in just a minute. Uh, but I first want to get a couple of things off my chest about income tax. Uh, every time someone suggests putting up the income tax rates, particularly top rates, someone out on the right, whether it's an actual politician or just a commentator, will complain that all the rich people are just going to leave the country and then we won't get any tax at all. These, these rich people are supposedly going to move their entire lives away um, for the sake of not having to pay an extra five pence in the pound over the 150k that they earn uh, to a completely new culture and possibly moving their entire families as well. I'm sure some people would, but I don't think it's as big as some of the people who complain about it claim it would be. But I do think if this is going to be a difference between Scotland and England, it does become a lot more likely. It seems a lot more feasible for someone to move from Edinburgh to London than it does from London to, say, uh, Switzerland. But again, I'm not saying that tons of wealthy Scottish people are going to leave the country. I'd like to think there's a little bit more to Scotland than just our tax rates, but it could be a more realistic outcome here. Another thing is some people in the various leaders' debates have complained th about the 40% tax ban. When it was introduced, about 1 in 20 people working paid that rate, and it, so it was very high earners comparatively, whereas now it's a lot closer to 1 in 6 or 1 in 7 people that pay it. And a lot of people complain that it's brought in people like teachers and senior nurses. The thing about income tax is it's based on your income, not your job. If someone does a job you like but they earn more than the threshold, they're paying that tax for it. But now that I've ranted, let's get to the drawing board. Since the power is getting devolved in 2017, let's look at what will happen then. A quick explanation before we start. Everyone receives a personal allowance, currently £11,000, on which you pay no income tax. However, if you earn more than £100,000, you begin to lose your personal rate allowance at the rate of £1 for every £2 earned. This means that if you earn more than £122,000, you have no personal allowance. The money that would have been your personal allowance is taxed at 40%. We'll start with what income tax will be in the rest of the UK, which is also the Scottish Conservatives policy. And personal allowance will be £11,500, any earnings above that up to £45,000 will be taxed at 20%, earnings above that up to £150,000 taxed at 40%, and anything above that at 45%. The justification from the Conservatives is that people in Scotland shouldn't be taxed more than in other parts of the UK. The manifesto also mentions cuts to income tax when it becomes affordable, but they accept that now is not the time. The plan is also to raise the 40% banned starting point to £50,000 by the year 2020. Next, the SNP, which is very similar to the UK government except the position of the 40% band. It is due to rise at the rate of inflation, meaning it will be a little over £43,000 at the start of the next tax year. This isn't a tax increase as much as not passing on a tax cut that is being made in the rest of the UK. They also want to eventually raise the personal allowance to £12,750, but as the UK government wants to raise this to £12,500 by 2020, it's only actually a small tax cut. Labour and the Lib Dems are going to continue raising the personal allowance at the same rate as the UK government, but also want to add 1% to the basic rate and higher rates, making them 21 and 41% respectively. They say this is a small increase to a lot of people that allow them to raise a large amount of tax. This has been attacked by both the SNP and Conservatives for taxing some of the lowest earners, but it's worth noting that due to the personal allowance increase, that your tax bill will only increase if you earn more than £21,500. Anything less than that and you just get less of a tax cut. The parties differ on the additional rate, currently at 45%, with the Lib Dems continuing the 1% theme, raising it to 46% whereas Labour would raise it to 50%, noting that these people have the ability to pay it. This again brings up the whole moving away argument, with some claiming that the overall tax taken could remain the same or even decrease. Now on to the plans with new bans, one from the left and one from the right. On the left we have the Greens, aiming to both raise revenue and redistribute the tax bill in favour of the wealthy paying more. The personal allowance will be 11500 but the basic band will be split in two, with 18% being paid on earnings up to £19,000 and 22% up to £43,000. This will reduce the tax bill of anyone earning under £26,500 a year. 
the higher rate will be raised from 40 to 43%, and any earnings over £150,000 will be taxed at 60%, 15% higher than they are currently. On the other side, we have UKIP, who believe that income tax in Scotland should never be higher than the rest of the UK, and ideally lower. The main immediate change is the creation of a 30% band for earnings between £45,300 and £55,000. This is aimed at the whole teachers and senior nurses not paying the 40% rate thing that I was chatting about earlier. The 40% rate kicks in at £55,000. In the long term, they are looking at only having 20, 30 and 40% bands, meaning that the current top rate of 45% would go. Let's have a look at what kinds of amounts people could be paying in each of these scenarios. We're looking at four income points here. £12,500, which is approximately what working on full time on the 21 plus minimum wage will get you. £24,000, a rough medium income, and fifty and £200,000, just to show how it will affect higher earners. The top row is the total tax bill for the rest of the UK, which is the same as the Conservative policy, with everything else being the difference. I've worked all these numbers out myself, and a few sources aren't entirely numerically explicit, so apologies if there's any miscalculations. So for the low earner, we don't have much of a difference, a slight rise from Labour and the Lib Dems and a slight cut from the Greens. This is due to a large part of the income being taxed three under the personal allowance. Come 2020, this entire wage would be less than the threshold to start paying tax. Our middle earner sees no change with the SNP or UKIP, an increase of a little over £10 a month with Labour and the Lib Dems, and the Greens would actually save them £50 over the year. It's probably worth noting that the Green policy is at its peak saving if you earn £19,000. Now our two high earners. Under the SNP, they will both still have to pay £400 due to the positioning of the 40% ban, but again, this is not getting a tax cut rather than an actual tax rise. For a 50k earner, we still have no £400 cut, but also rises of £385 for Labour and Lib Dems, and an extra £540 with the Greens. With UKIP, they get the £400 tax cut from the UK government, and also a further £530 tax cut too. Our high roller ends up paying £2,400 more under the Lib Dems, £4,400 under Labour, and almost a whopping £12,000 more under the Greens. Which, even when you earn £200,000, seems like a lot extra to being, be paying on top of what you already are, and might add some legitimacy to the movement arguments. UKIP somehow think it's justified to give this person an additional £600 tax cut on top of the UK government moving the 40% band. So what can the parties expect to raise from these taxes? A left-leaning think tank, the Institute for Public Policy Research Scotland, has calculated how much extra all of these parties, bar UKIP, would raise across the whole life of the Parliament up to 2021. Labour would raise the most, followed by the Greens and the Lib Dems. The SNP would raise a little bit more revenue than currently. And since these figures are compared to the UK government, the Conservatives won't raise any extra revenue. Labour will tell you that their policy is obviously the best as it raises the most, but the Greens will be sure to point out that they're not only raising extra revenue, but redistributing wealth at the same time. The SNP and Conservatives will be keen to point out that a lot of Labour's increased revenue comes from some of the poorer people in society. So has that made things a bit clearer for you and helped you make your mind up? Or have I just bombarded you with a load of numbers that you can't make sense of? Let me know in the comments below and I'll try and clear things up. I'm Keith and that was Income Tax.